Let's consider one special problem which is related to strong numbers. So let's get started. Write a program to check whether a number is a strong number or not. This is our problem statement. We need to write a program which checks whether a number is a strong number or not. But what is a strong number? Let's try to understand what exactly a strong number is. Strong number is a number in which the sum of factorial of individual digits of a number is equal to the original number. Now what does it really mean? Let's consider one example. Suppose we have a number 145. We need to check whether this number is a strong number or not. Then what we need to do? We need to take the individual digits and calculate the factorial of each of them. We need to calculate one factorial, then four factorial, then five factorial, and then finally add them together. If the result is equal to the actual number, then we can say that this is a strong number. Otherwise, it is not a strong number. Now you might wonder what is the meaning of factorial? Let's try to understand some basics related to factorial. Factorial of a positive integer n is the number which is obtained by multiplying all positive integers less than or equal to n. Let's consider one example here. Like suppose if we want to calculate the factorial of 3, then it is equals to 3 into 2 into 1. That is what is written in the definition. If we are considering one positive integer n, then the factorial of that particular integer is the number which is obtained by multiplying all positive integers less than or equal to n. This is our n, right? We need to consider all the positive integers which are less than or equal to n. That means we have to consider 3 also, we have to consider 2 also and we have to consider 1 also, right? And we simply multiply them together to produce the result which is equal to the factorial of a positive integer n. Here in this case, this is equal to 6. Let's consider one more example. 5 factorial is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1, which is equal to 120. So in general sense, we can say that n factorial is equal to n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into and so on into 3 into 2 into 1, right? This is what we need to understand about the factorial. Now we can come back again to our example that we had seen previously. As when we are calculating the factorial of individual digits, then what does the factorial results? 1 factorial is equals to 1 only. 4 factorial will be 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 which is equals to 24 and 5 factorial will be 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 which is equals to 120. We add them together and the result is 145. After understanding strong number and factorial, this is high time to get back to our question once again. We need to write a program which checks whether a number is a strong number or not. Let's consider some steps involved in writing a program. Step number one. Calculate the factorial of each digit of a number and add them. That is what we need to do. We need to calculate the factorial of each digit of a number. And then finally we need to add them together. Now what is the code behind that? Let's see the code. Here you can see I have written one code which calculates the factorial of each digit of a number and then finally add them. Initially I let q is equals to n. Now what is n? n is our actual number and we are letting q is equals to n. Then we have a fact variable which is initialized to 1 and we have a result variable which is initialized to 0. Now inside this while loop we are checking this condition is q equals to 0 or not. If q is not equals to 0, we get inside this while loop and then we perform this particular step. That is, remainder equals to q divided by 10. This is our modulus operator which will return the remainder. As q is initially n which is our actual number, so we are dividing the number by 10 and storing the remainder of that number in this remainder variable. In this way we would be able to obtain the last digit of the number. We are performing this for loop which will actually calculate the factorial of the number. This for loop goes from 1 to the remainder and it will calculate the factorial. After that we are simply storing the result inside this result variable and then we divide q again by 10. This time we are storing the quotient inside the q so that next time when we perform this particular step 
it will give us the second last digit and we repeat the same process once again in order to understand this code in a better way let's consider one example let's say our number is 145 as we know q is equals to n therefore q will be initialized to 145 now we check whether q is equals to 0 or not as 145 is not equals to 0 therefore we get inside this while loop as rem equals to q mod 10 and q is 145 therefore rem will be equals to 5 as the last digit of this number is 5 right after that we need to execute this for loop from 1 to 5 now inside this for loop we can see the logic fact equals to fact into i initially fact is 1 right when i is equals to 1 as condition is satisfied 1 is simply multiplied with 1 so fact simply contains 1 after that we increment the value of i i becomes 2 2 is less than 5 condition is again satisfied this time we multiply 1 with 2 and store 2 inside fact now we again increment the value of i i now becomes 3 3 is less than 5 therefore we come inside this for loop now this time we are multiplying 2 with 3 that means 1 into 2 into 3 we are storing the result inside this fact which is equals to 6 now we again increment the value of i now i becomes 4 again the condition is satisfied this time 1 into 2 into 3 is multiplied with 4 right which is now equals to 24 so 24 is stored inside the fact variable again we increment the value now it becomes 5 as 5 is equals to 5 therefore we again come inside this for loop now we simply multiply 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 with 5 which is exactly equals to 120 as you can clearly see this for loop mimics the behavior of factorial after that we simply store the result inside the result variable as we initialize result to 0 therefore 0 is added with the fact value which is equals to 120 now result will contain 120 right after that we initialize fact once again to 1 so that we would be able to repeat this process from fresh and then after that we divide q by 10 which results in value 40 right then we again repeat this process because 14 is not equals to 0 after dividing 14 by 10 the remainder would be 4 we perform this for loop 4 times now the value of fact would be 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 which is equals to 24 right and we simply store the result inside the result variable which is now 120 plus 24 as previous value of result is 120 therefore 120 plus 24 will result in 144 and this will get stored inside this result variable then again we divide q by 10 now q becomes 1 we again perform this operation that is 1 mod 10 which is equals to 1 now this for loop again runs just one time so fact value will be one only and then again we store the result inside the result variable which is 144 plus 1 which gives us 145 and we know when we divide q by 10 which is when 1 is divided by 10 this results in quotient 0 right as we check this condition is q equals to 0 or not as q is equals to 0 therefore we come outside of this while loop and the final output is 145 only now you can guess the next step the next step is simply to check whether the calculated result is equal to the actual number or not as the result is 145 and the actual number is also 145 therefore the output is 145 is a strong number if it is some other number which is not a strong number then it will simply result the number is not a strong number right now let's execute the code so that we would be able to see the result live as you can see this is our code which is the combination of the two steps that we had already seen let's see what this code results it asks us to please enter a number we entered suppose 145 and we already know it should result 145 is a strong number let's see whether it results or not yes it says 145 is a strong number therefore our code is correct let's execute this once again Let's say we entered 678. It's not a strong number, therefore it should result it is not a strong number. Yes, 678 is not a strong number. We can clearly see that our code is correct code. 
Therefore, we can say that we are successful in making a code which will check whether a number is a strong number or not. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation.